This is the Adrenal Insufficiency video series. I'm Anand Vaidya, and this is the first video in the series, which will be an introduction to adrenal insufficiency. To begin, let's talk about what is adrenal insufficiency. Adrenal insufficiency is a general term that refers to insufficient or entirely deficient production of adrenocortical hormones. The inability to produce these adrenocortical hormones may be due to a problem with both adrenal glands or due to a problem with the pituitary gland's ability to communicate with the adrenal glands. Adrenal insufficiency can cause a range of symptoms from mild to severe. So let's start with what are adrenocortical steroid hormones? Uh, here's a cartoon of the adrenal cortex. Uh, the adrenal cortex is a factory that produces adrenocortical steroids. It uses cholesterol as the substrate. And using this substrate, the zona glomerulosa can produce the adrenocortical hormone aldosterone. The zona fasciculata expresses the enzymatic machinery to produce cortisol. And the zona reticularis can produce adrenal androgens. For the purpose of this video and several of the other videos in this series, we will largely focus our attention on the two dominant and most important hormones in the adrenal cortex, which are aldosterone and cortisol. So here's the entire hypothalamus, pituitary, and adrenal axis. The hypothalamus and pituitary are in the brain. The adrenal glands sit on top of the kidneys in the abdomen and the receptors for cortisol and aldosterone, the glucocorticoid receptor and the mineralocorticoid receptor are expressed in cells throughout the body. So before we talk about the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, let's talk about the receptors. What happens when the hormones in the adrenal cortex act on these receptors? So activation of the glucocorticoid receptor by cortisol does many things. It can regulate blood glucose. It can regulate cardiovascular tone and blood pressure. It is important in the modulation of our immune system. It has multiple nervous system effects, such as appetite, mood, and sleep regulation. It's important in the development of fetal tissue, the induction of labor, and many other important bodily functions. The activation of the glucocorticoid receptor is critical in many tissues, cells, and organs in the body. Activation of the mineralocorticoid receptor classically has a more narrow role. It's largely expressed in the kidney and it induces in sodium reabsorption in the distal part of the kidney that results in an expansion of effective circulating volume in our blood. And it also increases the excretion of potassium and hydrogen or acid in our urine. So now that we know what uh, activation of these receptors do, let's go back to our hypothalamus, pituitary and adrenal axis. <clears throat> The hypothalamus secretes a hormone called CRH, corticotropin releasing hormone, which travels in the short distance to the pituitary and induces the production of corticotropin, also called adrenocorticotropin hormone, ACTH. ACTH then travels in an endocrine fashion throughout the body and stimulates the adrenal cortices to induce steroidogenesis. One of these key steroids is cortisol. The adrenal glands then in response to ACTH produce cortisol, which circulates throughout the blood and activates the glucocorticoid receptor wherever it is expressed. It's important to know that the glucocorticoid receptor is also expressed in the hypothalamus and pituitary, where the activation by cortisol actually has a unique function. It functions as a negative feedback loop. So the glucocorticoid receptor in the hypothalamus and pituitary functions to sense how much cortisol is being produced and in turn down regulates it, the production of ACTH and therefore cortisol. It's also important to note that in addition to being a glucocorticoid, cortisol is also a mineralocorticoid that can also potently activate the mineralocorticoid receptor. <clears throat> Most of this action at the level of the kidney is actually uh, inhibited by an enzyme called 11-beta-HSD2 or 11-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase 2. It metabolizes cortisol into cortisone, which is inactive, and therefore in the kidney, most of the cortisol does not activate the mineralocorticoid receptor. And this is important, as you'll see in a moment, because if you see in this cartoon, cortisol is one of the most abundant circulating steroids in our blood. In contrast, aldosterone circulates many fold lower than cortisol. In fact, it's about 100 to 1,000 fold lower in the circulation than cortisol. But because most of the cortisol is inactivated uh, in the kidney, 
aldosterone can retain a high affinity relationship with the mineralocorticoid receptor in the kidney, even though its uh, circulating concentration is much lower. As you can see in this cartoon, in contrast to cortisol, aldosterone production is regulated in part by ACTH, but also independently by several other factors, angiotensin II and high potassium. So to summarize, cortisol production by the adrenal glands is entirely dependent on ACTH. In contrast, aldosterone production by the uh, adrenal glands is not entirely dependent on ACTH. It is in part regulated by ACTH, but also independently regulated by angiotensin II and potassium balance. So there are three independent regulators of aldosterone, but one pure regulator of cortisol. It's also important to note that this hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis responds to diurnal variation, the circadian rhythm or the clock of our bodies, which is typically timed to sunrise and sunset or light and darkness but it also responds to stress, typically physical stress, but also uh, emotional and mental stress. Uh, in response to stress, ACTH and cortisol production are augmented relative to the degree of that stress. Here's a cartoon of a, a classical circadian rhythm. You can see cortisol production is very low overnight and rises in the morning, uh, typically with sunrise or the exposure to light and it peaks in the early morning and then dwindles down throughout the day only to reach a nadir again with sunset or darkness or sleep and rises again. So this is called a circadian rhythm or a diurnal rhythm. But it's important to note that each of our diurnal variation is different, right? So here's a separate person, here's another person. You can see that all three of these individuals have a peak cortisol at some time in the morning, which dwindles down throughout the day, nadirs overnight only to peak again in the morning. But it's hard to know when each of our peaks will be and how high that peak will be, uh, which adds to some of the challenges in measuring cortisol, interpreting cortisol, and diagnosing adrenal insufficiency, which we'll get into in later uh, parts of this video series. So uh, let's quickly introduce uh, some of the forms of adrenal insufficiency that we will uh, build on throughout the series. This is a cartoon of primary adrenal insufficiency, sometimes also referred to as Addison's disease. The term primary adrenal insufficiency means that both adrenal cortices have somehow become non-functional, inhibited, deficient, or injured, or uh, destroyed. Because you need the adrenal cortex to make adrenocortical hormones, primary adrenal insufficiency results in a deficiency of all adrenocortical hormones, meaning there is a deficiency of cortisol and aldosterone. Because the negative feedback of cortisol is now gone, there is a rise, an appropriate physiologic rise in CRH and ACTH. Secondary adrenal insufficiency is a different form of adrenal insufficiency. In secondary adrenal insufficiency, there is a problem with the hypothalamus and or the pituitary such that there is an insufficient or deficient production of ACTH. Since you need ACTH to make cortisol, there is a resultant deficiency of cortisol, but not necessarily aldosterone. And here you can see in secondary adrenal insufficiency, in theory, the adrenal cortices, the adrenal glands are fine. Nothing happened to them, but they're not being stimulated by ACTH and therefore not producing cortisol. So to summarize this introductory video, which we uh, reviewed, what is adrenal insufficiency? Adrenal insufficiency is a general term that refers to insufficient or deficient production of adrenocortical hormones. This inability to produce adrenocortical hormones may be due to a problem with both adrenal glands or alternatively due to a problem with the pituitary gland's ability to communicate with the adrenal glands via ACTH. And adrenal insufficiency can cause a range of symptoms from mild to severe. And we'll talk about all of these in much more detail in subsequent videos. This ends the first video. You can now continue to part two.